Hello, and welcome to Ipsa Dixit, a podcast on legal scholarship. I'm your host, Brian L. Fry, Spears Gilbert Associate Professor of Law at the University of Kentucky College of Law. My guest is Michael L. Smith, an associate at Glazer, Weil, Fink, Howard, Avchin, and Shapiro LLP in Century City. We will discuss his article, Shooting Fish, which will be published in the Kentucky Journal of Equine, Agricultural, and Natural Resources Law, or as they like to say, the K Journal. So welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. So uh, some law review articles are metaphorical, uh, but but yours isn't metaphorical. Um, is shooting fish something people actually do? And how is that actually accomplished? It, well, I can tell you that it is something that people do. Um, I am originally, I grew up most of my life in Iowa, and uh, I have relatives who lived on farms, uh, lots of land, lots of water on or near that land. And um, I can tell you that I've witnessed instances of uh, when people are irritated with carp or upset with uh, invasive fish, sometimes they just sort of resort to what they think might be the quick and easy way of getting rid of them. Um, so it is something that, uh, I have seen people do, um, and based on the number of laws that I've seen and researching and drafting this paper, um, it seems to be something common enough that every state has, uh, either some outright explicit restriction or effectively restricts the shooting of fish with guns. Well, so maybe you could touch on that a little bit because your article very comprehensively explores the different ways that different states have gone about regulating the use of firearms in relation to to fish. But I wonder if you could kind of taxonomize it a little bit, as it were, for us. Like, how exactly do different states approach this issue from a regulatory perspective? Sure, it's... The, the, there's sort of a majority approach where, where most states take a particular approach, and then there's a couple mixed additional approaches. So most states take an approach where their restrictions on methods of shooting, killing, or taking fish in general take the form that's – take the general template of – you may take fish by means of a rod and reel or hook and line unless otherwise provided by law. Then the law goes on in different subsections as well as in regulations to sort of explain a variety of other means that people can use to take fish. And those can be very extensive, sort of a, a lot of regulations, a lot of subsections and laws are devoted to that. Those would then include other means like using something as basic as a net or uh, other methods such as ice fishing or things like that, or using bows and arrows, spears, and then occasionally permitting for um, other stranger methods, um, which I mention a few methods in the article, but, um, and, and then in, in some cases, usually with uh, state actors, it'll permit sort of typically outlawed methods such as uh, electrocution, poison, or stunning fish in some ways like that. That's the majority approach, sort of only rod or reel unless we say otherwise. The other sort of similar approach that a lot of states also take is they have a law like that, saying, you know, only rod and reel unless we say otherwise. But then I guess for, for good measure or to just make it clear, they also have specific restrictions included. So you'll have um, that sort of blanket restriction, but then you'll have other laws that go on to restrict um, shooting fish with guns is a common restriction. Other common restrictions include using chemicals, poisons, uh, electricity or explosives, um, all for sort of obvious reasons, uh, which, I, which I could get into later. Um, there's a couple states, though, that are a little bit more scattershot. Some sort of do take what I what I call the laundry list approach of uh, just listing out a ton of ways that people cannot take fish. And so that's where you get these very long statutes and related regulations listing out sort of a whole list of things people cannot do. Um, and then there's one state, I believe it was North Dakota, which I get into in particular, which from my research appeared to actually almost entirely outlaw fishing on accident, although by implication, fishing may be, f fishing seems to be allowed in that state. Practically, it seems to be allowed in that state. But um, that state in particular kind of, it had a law basically saying you can only fish by methods permitted in this statute. It didn't even explicitly say rod and reel. 
And it went on to list a very few means of fishing. I think ice fishing was included. But then um, there was sort of a, if a fish is legally caught through rod and reel, these things can be done, which implies that catching fish through rod and reel is uh, is legal. But uh, North Dakota, uh, in and I'm a little bit strong about this in the article, could have done a better job in drafting their statute. <laughs> So you think maybe North Dakota needs to maybe do a little statutory fix to make sure that people are aware or to, to rather fix the statute such that um, normal everyday fishing is permissible? I think to make it clear, that would be a good thing. As a lawyer who's concerned with statutory interpretation and who uh, likes to read these laws in my spare time for whatever reason, I would be nervous fishing in North Dakota without a more solid legal basis. Uh to go catch fish. I mean, it's something that people do. It's a very common activity. Uh, uh, it seems to be something that people all take for granted. But I do think that if they, it would be a simple fix. Uh, and there's plenty of states out there that could serve as an easy template for just adjusting the law to make it obvious that, yes, you can, in fact, fish legally. So <clears throat> it just so happens that, you know, I live in Kentucky. I've lived here for about eight years now, and you'll be publishing your article in one of the two University of Kentucky law journals. And I must say that I was very disappointed to learn that the great state of Kentucky regulates the shooting of fish. And so, Michael, I was wondering if you can help me understand, while I'm here in Lexington, when, uh, when am I or am I not allowed to shoot fish. You are not allowed to shoot fish, as far as I can tell, in almost any circumstances. Uh, if I recall correctly, the Kentucky restriction prohibits uh, killing, shocking, and stunning fish with explosive firearms and other devices. Um, but, and I would maybe add a caveat. Uh, for certain other states uh, where they limit that restriction to, say, waters of the state or in public waters. Um, I might have to go back and double check, but from my recollection, there is no such qualifier on Kentucky's statute. So if you want to shoot a fish, uh, unfortunately, I think you're going to have to uh, go to another state, at least a state that would allow you to shoot the fish, perhaps um, in private waters or in uh, an aquarium of your own choosing. In Kentucky, though, I think you might be out of luck. Okay, okay. Though well, that's really uh, that's really unfortunate and disappointing. We're going to have to do something about this because you know it's just not freedom in America if you can't shoot fish in your own dang state. <laughs> um. So, Michael, I was wondering if you could reflect on whether or not, or rather share your expertise, really, on whether shooting fish is an effective method of harvesting them. I mean, are there advantages and disadvantages to harvesting fish via firearms? I think that largely um, there's a recognition that there's disadvantages to harvesting fish with firearms. There's certainly a technique for doing it. Um, and I get this into the article. One of the very few areas that allows almost unfettered shooting of fish is Lake Champlain in Vermont. Uh, during, I think it's a month or a month and a half period in the summer, uh, you're allowed to just go down and shoot a variety of different species of fish with firearms. They don't really restrict the firearms. So reports on this practice have reported on people bringing down, you know, rifles, pistols, and even the, the article said AK 47s, which Maybe the maybe the author. I'm not sure if that was happening or not, but um, and and people that have done it there, they were quoted as saying, you know, you have to, you don't aim at the fish, but if you aim near the fish, you can stun it or kill it. Um, in that method, if you shoot the fish itself, a disadvantage is that you could destroy the fish entirely. Um, so that's one potential disadvantage to shooting fish, along with other disadvantages such as you have to be, you know, close enough to see the fish. You have to avoid shooting the water at a shallow enough angle. In my exhaustive research in this paper, I came across several ridiculous videos of people demonstrating that you can ricochet bullets off of water uh, through the surface tension. If you shoot at a 
and, and there was a gentleman who popped a balloon on the other side of a pond by bouncing the bullet off of the water on the pond and popping the balloon, which uh, as someone who's read about people running down to Lake Champlain and shooting fish uh, gave me cause for concern. Um, so there's definitely risks to harming yourself or others, um, particularly given the danger of ricocheting bullets. And then there's just the um, the concern about sportsmanship. Is it really sporting to to shoot fish with guns? Uh, I mean, when you go fishing, it's been a while for me, but when, when I would fish uh, when I was younger in Iowa, it was largely about the weight, about finding the right spot and about, you know, the technique of reeling it in and a lot of that is lost when you're just outright shooting the fish with a gun. So there's some advantages. It can be quick. It can be efficient for getting rid of pest uh, species. It's, it's definitely been proposed as a potential solution when taking the fish isn't so much the goal as eliminating the fish, but largely there's a number of risks, both to people, the environment and to the sport of fishing itself that in, in my opinion, um, I think that these restrictions are, sensible. Um, although it may be worth having, you know, the occasional exception or two in uh, Vermont or uh, I think Virginia as well. Mm. Well, so when I initially started reading your article, I sort of pictured shooting fish as something you would do like shooting down into the water. But I was um, distressed to learn that it seems as if there are is at least the potential for aerial fish shooting as well. Yes, that's the the problem of Asian carp uh, is is actually a, a, a big environmental problem sort of throughout the Midwest uh, in the Mississippi and uh, various rivers connecting to it. It's there's this invasive species of carp called Asian carp, which is a silver fish that grows to up to I think a hundred pounds has been reported, and and their sort of big um, distinguishing feature is that they are shocked by loud noises. That includes large, uh, mainly boat engines. And so you'll have people that are just motor boating along in M the Mississippi River, and these fish come hurtling out of the water just into the air. So there's videos and there's reports of people just sort of cruising down the river, and then fish are just flying through the air, landing in the boat, occasionally hitting people. They can become so large that they can actually be quite hazardous if you're going too quickly. So, um, there has been at least one proposal, I think it was in Illinois or Indiana, where a legislator had proposed allowing people to go out and just sort of shoot these Asian carp, these flying fish, almost in, in the same method that someone would fire, um, would, would go skeet shooting uh, and shoot clay pigeons. You would essentially motorboat along, wait for the fish to fly out of the water, and then try to shoot them out of the air. Um, there's videos of people doing this, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it from a legal perspective. Um, but yeah, it's it's the the types of fish that are out there, the methods of taking them, and the the quirks and characteristics of different species are so widely varied that I think that's one reason why you see such variation in the laws of restrictions on, on shooting or taking fish and why you have so much variation in people proposing alternate methods of doing so. Mm. Well, so I wonder, I mean, if in your research you came across any technical information about the most effective or efficient methods and tools for using when shooting fish. In other words, if I want to go out and shoot some fish, um, how should I go about doing it? Like, are, they, are there particular kinds of firearms that are better suited or worse suited to fish shooting? And are there particular kinds of fish that might be, you know, good ones to shoot at as opposed to not so good ones <laughs> to shoot at? As far as types of fish, I'm not so sure. Although if you are going to shoot fish, um, the states that have, allowed uh, exceptions for shooting the fish, which, as I mentioned, are Vermont and Virginia in certain specific areas during certain specific times, uh, you would have to check on the law to make sure that you're shooting the right kind of fish. Even those restrictions, which are generally liberal in how you can take fish with guns, um, require you to only allow you to only do it for certain species of fish. Also, if you're in Vermont, no doing it on a Sunday. Um, but <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, so, so, actually, so, there's, so, there's, so there's blue laws on fish shooting then? There is. And that is, that's actually, I believe that's a Virginia restriction and not a, and not a Vermont restriction. But yes, um, you are not allowed to uh, shoot fish on 
Sundays in the uh, one or two rivers that I believe you can you can do that in Virginia. With God so, disapprove, I guess, huh? <laughs> and as far as methods or means of taking fish, um, I mean, yeah, I don't I don't think that this is something that uh, Adam and Eve were really doing. They didn't really have the tools. So from a biblical originalism perspective, it makes sense. Um, but um, as far as methods of taking fish or, or types of guns, I think there's there's a, I think debate or personal opinions on that. It's not something that people commonly do. Um, but for people that do make a tradition of doing it, uh, tip, these are again, those folks in Vermont that were interviewed by, um, the, the occasional article covering that practice. I think, um, I, I think they would use either pistols or rifles. And again, the main technique was to fire the gun near the fish so that the concussion would, I think, destroy the fish's air bladder, causing it to float to the surface. And I think often killing the fish, um, but again, if you shoot the fish directly, generally, um, unless it's a large species of fish, um, that's not going to to be a good idea. You're not going to have much to take. Uh, now, Alaska and Hawaii do permit shooting of fish that have already been lawfully caught, typically by a rod or a reel. Um, I think this largely is this 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 would apply to cases with the larger species of fish or or bigger fish um, where you've you've reeled it in you 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 have it under your control and you just gotta you know take it out once you have it um, in those limited circumstances Hawaii and Alaska do permit you to shoot a fish in that sort of a situation. Yeah, I've heard about that for like halibut and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so I, I gotta ask, right, like these laws prohibiting shooting fish what if i like buy a fish at the grocery store and take it home with me can i shoot that fish in some states um most likely yes uh and i i'd, I'd made a reference to it earlier where there's certain laws uh off the top of my head i know wyoming is one of these states where the shooting of fish is limited to shooting fish in the waters of that state or shooting fish of the state's waters or public waters. In those circumstances, yours would sort of be the extreme private water circumstance where you have obtained the fish through lawful means, you put it in some container or perhaps a barrel, and then um, you, you, can, you take your firearm and shoot it. And at that point, you're not shooting it in the public waters. Um, you can, some states are flexible on that too. There's um, situations where if you have water on your land, most typically water on your land that doesn't uh, lead into other uh, waters. So if there's a stream or a river connecting it to the larger public or to other properties, we may run into problems. But a private pond in certain states, there have been courts that have actually confronted the issue and concluded that the state laws do not apply to purely private waters. Uh, a lot of the sort of constitutional state constitutional bases for these laws or or uh, statutory bases for fishing restrictions um, are limited to situations with public waters or, or waters that connect to public waters. So if in your situation or even if a, in a private pond situation, uh, you may be permitted to, to shoot that fish if the law indeed uh, prohibits you from shooting fish in public waters. Mm. Well, so in your in your research, Michael, did you come across a community of fish shooting enthusiasts? I mean, if I want to get into the hobby of fish shooting and meet kind of like-minded fish shooters, where would I go to find them? In my research, I did not come across uh, very much of a community there. If you were going to try to find them, though, I would I would suggest looking at people in or near Vermont because that's one of the sort of main places to go to do it. Um, but I think it sort of gets back to um, the issue of, of sportsmanship or is this a fitting way to shoot fish? I found plenty of communities of of people and of people who liked killing fish in particular ways. I learned about some incredible devices in researching this article. I found communities of people devoted to sling bows, for instance, which is effectively a wrist mounted crossbow slash slingshot slash harpoon that you can reel in once you have arrowed the fish using the sling bow. Um, and there's a bunch of people out there who compare different kinds of sling bows, how to use them, and, and are very excited about those. Um, but as far as communities of people that are into shooting fish, generally, I didn't find as much of a community um, as I did with people who are 
ex- enjoy catching or taking fish in general or catching and taking fish through specific ways like ice fishing or things like that. And I think it does largely come down to it's it is heavily restricted and generally not permitted. And also it may just not be seen as the most sporting uh, way of taking fish. And so uh, people prefer other means, uh, more traditional means or more creative yet challenging means in uh, catching their fish. Mm. Well, I mean, one does one one does have to wonder, you know, if we were to liberalize the rules around shooting fish, whether fishing communities would would be more likely to develop it's possible i mean i in in into today with social media and with the groups of people that are developing online i would i would be unsurprised if if something like that happened with more liberal laws that were more widespread okay so now we're going to get to the real meat of the interview i gotta know michael like how common are fish shooting prosecutions they are not common. Um, I, I, I did some searching, just sort of, you know, reports and news. And well, I did reports for, for cases as well. I found, I think, maybe one or two cases that did actually involve people going on to land to shoot fish. I think one of them, I believe it may have been a Kansas case, and it had to do with the private public water distinction. So there have been at least a, re- a couple of reported cases on the subject. But largely, otherwise, uh, fish shooting prosecution is rare. Uh, I think there are incidental mentions of fish shooting, but usually it's when it's connected to a, a, an, a, a shooting of or attempted shooting of people that where fish get caught in the crossfire. Um, and that usually involves aquariums or things like that. Pe- people report on it, although I don't know if they're prosecuted for it. Um, so from my research, from my investigation, fish shooting prosecutions are generally rare. Uh, whether that's because they're a low priority or if they're just not something that people typically do, I'm not so sure about that. Mm. Well, one wonders if perhaps people are shooting fish clandestinely and the authorities just aren't learning about it. It could be possible. This this article could bring to light a, a, a shadow practice and it could redirect the priorities of law enforcement nationwide. So uh, it is possible we may see a um, an increase in fish shooting prosecutions if this article gets the coverage that I that I expect it to receive. <laughs> so what kind of I mean, if there were to be <laughs> fish shooting prosecutions, what kind of penalties are associated with unlawful fish shooting? Uh, generally there, these penalties are, are misdemeanors and, and they're, they're likely, it likely wouldn't be too unusual from a legal perspective because these fish shooting restrictions are often grouped in with laws restricting fishing that people, I believe would more commonly try and do more commonly try to use. I think explosives is one of the explosives and electricity are probably the closest analogies to it, um, where people use gunpowder, dynamite, or things like that to just take out large groups of fish. Um, And that is illegal in many states. That is often in the same statute, the same subsection that bans shooting fish with guns. And a prosecution for shooting fish would probably look very similar to a prosecution like that. Um, Typically a misdemeanor prosecution. um, And it may, you know, be a bit more specialized than your typical misdemeanors, but uh, it would be, I think, relatively straightforward. And in some states, there would be special uh, statutes or elements that apply because there are a few states that include presumed intents um, with possessing particular items or instruments uh, near or on the water. So, for instance, uh, I believe it's in Tennessee, you have a law that if you're stopped on a boat and you have certain devices such as explosives, batteries, or I think walnut shells are also included. You are presumed, there's a prima facie assumption that you are using those with the intention to take fish. Uh, Guns is also included there, but there's an exception where, except for guns, you are not assumed to be possessing that gun for the purpose of shooting fish. So there may be some interesting um, intent elements that may arise in cases uh, that involve fish shooting prosecutions or similar prosecutions for explosives, electricity, or things like that. So uh, you mentioned that you came across some other interesting fish harvesting techniques, and I got to say, I'm I'm intrigued. So like, what's your 
favorite way that people go about harvesting fish that I might not previously have been aware of. I think the sling bow that I mentioned earlier was probably the most just fascinating just by, by virtue of the number of different weapons and techniques that it combines into one single instrument. It's just, it's just an, uh, a fascinating device that I had no idea existed before I wrote this paper. Um, and as I meant, yeah, it's essentially a wrist mounted slingshot, slingshot crossbow device that fires an arrow connected to a line which if you spear a fish, you can then reel in um, to the device. So it's kind of a cross between, yeah, fishing rod, crossbow, slingshot, and harpoon. Um, mm. There are some other devices. Uh, I discovered that a, a lot of sort of poison restrictions are out there. People, as I mentioned, use walnuts uh, because they contain a toxin called a juglone, which tends to stun, stupefy, poison, and sometimes kill fish. It can do that to other wildlife and animals as well. So restricting it is a, a sensible, uh, I, I think, a sensible regulation. There's also fish berries, which are Levant berries, which have a similar effect on fish that uh, are often restricted by states. Um, there's also a method, um, there's also just sort of devices that have interesting names. I learned about the fish pew in writing the article, which uh, I was extremely excited about. Um, I thought that we're, you know, converting fish to Christianity and somehow using that to trick them into taking them, uh, perhaps a fish rapture. But no, it's just a single tined uh, pitchfork device that for instead of calling it a spear, it's called a pew. Uh, so those are some of the more interesting devices that I had no idea existed before I began writing this article that now I know and describe um, throughout the article. So <clears throat> I got to say, this is like some of the finest legal scholarship that I've seen. You really do follow through 100% on everything that the article promises. It is indeed a comprehensive discussion of the law regulating the shooting of fish. Um, and and I and I, I got I mean I started the interview by saying it's not a metaphor, but come on, man, is it a metaphor or is sometimes a law review article just a law review article? I think I don't know if it's necessarily a metaphor, but I think it's an example of how the in depth study of of quirky or maybe disregarded subjects can still have very serious and um, very substantial implications from a legal and academic perspective. Uh, I focused in on this one specific point. Um, I had been reading a, a book by um, Kevin Underhill, The Emergency Sasquatch Ordinance, where he describes Wyoming's law against shooting fish. That got me onto this particular subject. And as I did the research, as I looked into the issue and just decided to write out as exhaustive an article as I could, this quirky issue gets into statutory interpretation problems, drafting of statutes, the politics behind that. The paper discusses constitutional implications, both Second Amendment federal constitution as well as state right to hunt uh, constitutional amendments. It gets into issues of environmental law, why these uh, restrictions may be in place and what implications we may be dealing with there. And um, at the end, uh, you go from this quirky, interesting topic, shooting fish with guns, and you end up with a paper that surveys areas of law from constitutional law to statutory interpretation and covers a wide range of areas. I learned a great deal by, by writing this article, and I think other people who are writing articles or maybe not writing articles because they view it as an odd passion project that they wouldn't want to pursue should really give that a second thought. I think this this is an example of how you should just write about what interests you. And the fact is, the legal significance, the implications, they'll follow. There, you will, if you go deep enough, you'll flesh out those substantive issues and it'll be something worth writing about and worth reading. Well, my hat is off to you, man. It's a great piece. I loved it so much. And I'm so delighted I was able to have you on the program to talk about it. I appreciate the opportunity, and I I always enjoy uh, the chance to talk more about all this knowledge that I now suddenly have about the 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 law of shooting fish.
Fish heads, fish heads, eat them up. Yum. Fish heads, fish heads, roly poly fish heads, fish heads, fish heads, eat them up. Yum. In the morning, laughing happy fish heads. In the evening, floating in the soup. Fish heads. Drinking cappuccino in Italian restaurants with Oriental women. 